Hello, 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 and welcome to Under the Hood. I am Dr. Abstract, and I hope you're doing well. We're going to go take a look at some code now, so let's do that. Oh my goodness, this has been so much fun. We're <laughs> so much fun over the last week, I suppose. I've uh, been holding on to um, some bugs or some glitches in a very complex arrangement. For a while, we have had these connectors, but you couldn't make the connector with lines already connected. As a matter of fact, these lines are from an image. Why don't we remove that image? So we're looking at connectors three. We'll get rid of the pick here. And hopefully that will just work. Refresh. Yeah, there they are. So, uh, and we'll stop the steps here because that's, that's we're kind of going in reverse and we refresh here. And we also want to turn off the, the get steps. Okay, there. So we can do this inter uninterrupted <laughs> by the little pop-up. So we have these connectors and yet we couldn't start them off with the lines connected. You would always have to do the connections yourself. And so here we are making any number of connections. So for instance, we couldn't start the connectors looking like that. <laughs> you know, like a star field, please recreate this Pegasus or whatever we've just done. Okay, let me try. Oh, I did it. Yeah. I think I've gotten a reward here after, um, after so many connections. How many is it? Seven connections. Yes, if you make seven connections, then it wins. Uh, okay, well, fine. So what we decided to do is uh, there are two ways. The, the route that we always thought we would do is provide a hierarchy object. So Zim's got a hierarchy object that is basically um, allows you to make hierarchies, which maybe wouldn't have worked because you're not always making hierarchies here. For instance, there is um, one hierarchy that starts from here and opens up those ones but here's another hierarchy that is starting down here um, so that would be a little bit awkward we would have to then pass in two hierarchy objects <laughs> to make this and then uh you know i was like and not only that working with hierarchy objects are pretty tricky we did that with with um uh, what was it? The list, the list that has lists within lists, basically. What's it called? The accordion, uh, nested accordions, basically. Or was it just one accordion? No, it was nested accordions. Yeah, that kind of deal. Anyway, and hierarchies are tricky structurally to specify. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with that as well. So we tried, uh, we thought of a different route, and that is let the people record these so or, or actually automatically record them and then let them recreate what was recorded so that is kind of like what we were doing with blob and squiggle um with blob and squiggle you make the blob and squiggle and then you can drag things around and then if you record points it tells you oh here's what you've here's what you've done and you can take those points and pass them into the blob or squiggle at the beginning to recreate that um, and that's worked quite well so we're going to do the same thing with connectors where, okay, if you want the connectors to start off a certain way, you've got to make them, then record the points and pass those points into the connectors. And then there's two ways that we could have recorded points. Uh, one is, oh, sorry, I keep on forgetting that this uh, usually when I'm doing this, I have a browser plus open here and that's not browser plus. <laughs> Every time I click here, it disappears. Um, anyway, this, this is a normal browser. What was I saying though? Um, there are two ways that we could deal with recording points. One is we could look at what is made and try and say, all right, there are now this many dots. There are many, this many lines and just recreate those. Uh, the problem with that is all of those dots and lines have been, they remember children. So for instance, if I um, double click here, it knows that all these things are its children. If I double click here, it knows these are its children. Well, if I just record the dots and the lines, I also then have to record the data um, for that is all held within those dots and lines. Mm, and that might be possible, but they're, they're references. So they actually hold arrays that reference these other two and, and things like that. And I don't know, I don't think I can record that data. Yeah, that's right. We can't record that data ahead of time. 
it has to be made. The things have to be made in certain orders and then the references are applied. So it's sort of like, oh crap, we can't just record the data of what's where and expect to recreate it. So instead, we actually recorded where we pick up and where we drop. And it then is recreating the recording by just playing back these. So in other words, here, let's go to the code now. Oh, it's not the code. Here's the code. Uh, so this is under the hood. Woohoo. Yay. Here we are under the hood inside. And we're looking at these guys right here. I'll make this a bit bigger for us. The nodes. So when we mouse over, mouse out, mouse down, press move, and press up, we're doing these things. And the primary ones here are when we mouse down, we record that we're mousing down. And this was this was like wild as well because when we mouse down we've got to start dragging like we have to make a node and move it and that's always difficult because you haven't moused down on the node that you've made and therefore normal drag doesn't work properly because you, you never mouse down on the thing that you made so what we're doing instead is we're making a copy dropping it down below we're actually moving the thing that we mouse down on which would have been the parent but we turn the parent into a child by swapping all the properties so all of the all of the parent properties go to the child which then becomes a parent and then the new child properties get applied to the old parent sort of thing um yeah that is being dragged so that's confusing already. <laughs> That's what's happening when we mouse down. When we control mouse down, that means we're multiple or we possibly selecting at that point. So we can do multiple select on a double click and no, I can't remember. Maybe control mouse down is delete. Uh, no, I think that's a select. Okay, so there's other things going on there too. There's both um, double clicking, there's clicking and holding, and that that will, that will no, delete. That deletes. And I think there might be another delete as well. Anyway, um, then we're moving, and as we move, the lines are drawn. Uh, so when we recreate this, if we want to draw lines, which we do, we've actually got to call the press move as well, even though we're not, it doesn't really matter. So basically what we're doing is we're recording the mouse down as a, which, what's, what's picked up, and then when we press up, we record where we want to go to. And that might land on another node. But luckily, we're, since we're calling these things as we rebuild, it knows that and it will make that other node for us and we'll transfer the data in the right way. And so it's basically just recreating the drags and drops is what, we've, um, what we're doing. So that went all right for making nodes. It was just uh, very tricky when it came to moving multiple nodes. <laughs> and that's where, so we, we got the first part all right. Uh, I can show you some of that now under the hood. I can show you some of that. We got the first part all right. Uh, but then that bug was when we had multiple nodes going. So uh, I can tell you about that. Let's um, just pop on down here. So this is set nodes. There's the over node, hold node, out node. But we don't really care about those. Those are sort of just like rollovers and stuff. Here's the down node right here. Here's us uh, wondering if we're um, coming back from a double click, I think, or something like that, working out whether we're double clicking on it and that, that would select it. Um, oh, here's the parent switch. So look at all this stuff. And these are references to stuff that actually exists. And so that's why we can't really record it in data. It, they haven't, they wouldn't have existed yet the references, so we had to actually recreate as we went. All right, and there we are uh, flipping it or doing whatever, adding all the things to the new child. Here's the move node. We don't really care too much about in the move node, uh, but there it is drawing lines. Uh, we'll have to recall the move node. And luckily, if we just, if we just um, set the, the final node to its resting point, it's like its end resting point and call the move, it just draws a line to the end resting point, everything seems to work. So where it all is really happening is in the up node. And we've had to add two more parameters here to handle different aspects. Let's see if we get into that, I don't know how much under the hood we're, <laughs> we're going on to, but these two things have been added from the steps down below. Um, 
So in here, we have a bunch of places where we are dispatching, and that was lucky. You know, hey, there's no connection. We were dispatching another no connection, dispatching a connection. Ah, so anytime we have a connection, we want to record. If there's a no connection, there's no point in recording. However, um, not all of the, the connectors work with whether it's connected or not. Uh, there's a lot of connectors that don't care, and they don't, don't even, I don't even know, I guess they still might make connections. Yeah, I think they do. So we've got records there. Uh, there's a no connect, so it's no problem. But here as well is, are a couple more records down below. Let's see, where are they? Connections. So there's another recording. Get rid of that. I still have some variables. So um, at one point, we realized that uh, the bug was caused by, we haven't really even seen the rest of the stuff, but the bug was caused by when we multiple dragged, when we dragged multiple things, I don't do you know what that looks like. Where'd my browser go? This is right here. Okay, may as well stick the edge out here. Um, if I double click this like that and I drag, the whole, the whole parts go double click that and they Oh, those are also double click. Okay, double click here and all those parts go like so. Oh my God, I never thought of that. <laughs> Crap. Um, the double clicking goes back to the, the parent, which would be this one. But if I've got two parents like that, uh, my double click goes back to this parent. I'm not sure if that's going to be recorded now that I look at that. Ah, okay. When you are adjusting and, <laughs> and recording your nodes, don't go to two different parents and select different branches. <laughs> God, I don't know. Can can we handle it? Maybe it'll handle it. I'm not sure. It's sort of like, it, it's a little bit like that. It's a little bit, you know, let's hope it works because this was darn complicated, I tell you. Uh, but anyway, um, what was happening is, is as we move this, the records were ha were coming from these guys as well. So we were recording. We thought that we needed to record that these things just moved. And that's where the mistake was. All we had to do was trust in the system and only record the movement of this. And then the system will move those ones. So what was happening is we were getting multi more nodes after we recorded that thing. And here's, here's the kind of data that we're going through. <laughs> So uh, this under the hood is more so here's what we sometimes have to put up with as we build. It's not, I'm not trying to take you through all the steps and have you understand all the steps. Okay. So it's more like this is what is going through. This is what's happening as we're building this. And if you think that's bad, here's where the bug was. Here's connector two. So um, what we've done is we're, we're on the second part of... Um, bolstering the connectors. The other part of bolstering the connectors where we could always make the connectors work in a linear manner. I don't know, uh, as in when we connect, let's just refresh this. When we connect, we could say, uh, it would be easier to show you with an on here. We're in connectors three. Let me just move this to an on. Where'd it go? There it is. Drop type on. Okay. So now it won't connect unless we drop. So we were always able to do in order. So say these were the, the order of the, the points there. Um, we would let you do that. And that worked for connect the dots type thing. And if you, if you did the wrong order, it wouldn't let you connect. In this case, though, we don't have any order. And so it doesn't matter. I can connect these up like that. I can even connect it back again. So anyway, if, if you did it in a series, I think it was called, it was in order. But now what we've done is we've added in a drop array here. And so the drop array says point one or point zero is allowed to go to these ones. Point one is allowed to go to these points. Point two is allowed to go, et cetera. So that's how we bolstered it. And that allows for more types of puzzles and things like that, more allowed connections versus not allowed connections. And also if you're complete and it captures if you're stuck, like if there's no more that you can go to, if um, if you're doing continuous, it means always go from the last dot that you dropped. So that's another thing. And so if you're stuck, there's no more connections available. You can't go to any of these because they're all full. 
then it triggers an event. And so that's been wonderful. So that was our first um, adjustments to it. And um, we worked on that back in connector two. And so what we did is we brought the docs in here and we were updating the docs about the various properties that we were adding. So that's why the doc parts are in here. So if I scroll down more, here's where we were working on some of that. And then here's us working through the bug stuff again. <laughs> it's just like, check this out. You know, these things were like more of these things were showing up than they were supposed to. And we're trying to figure out what the data is. And then we're saying, you know, uh, to get rid of the, the, the first issue was uh, double tap was affecting it. And so that's what one of those, um, one of these parameters are, was to handle the double tap uh, right in the move up node. Uh, yeah, ignore double here. And so that allowed us to, let's, let's show you where we were calling those things. We'll scroll on down. But anyway, uh, just to come back to that, this <laughs> has been <laughs> a, a lot of work and many of the things that we do in Zim are a lot of work. If, if you think this at all looks complicated, you should have a look at animate at some point, <laughs> animate, which seemingly for you guys is just like so simple. And we always say, oh, animate is just so simple compared to CSS animation. It's just so easy. Um, well, the reason for that is because in behind animate, we are handling something like 50 different things. 50 different serious custom things that are all really complex, like animating or dragging along a, a path, a dynamic animation, percent complete, all sorts of really, really complicated things, series, sequences, <laughs> etc., all in behind there. And that is like, wow, that's that's something else. Um, yet, you know, other other ones too, layouts, wrappers, all these, all these other ones, these big ones are very, very complicated too. So anyway, uh, that's under the hood. Uh, maybe we'll show you through some of those some days. I think we did take you through a little bit of animate in the under the hood. If you're if you're digging this, then certainly come in and um, you know have a look at some of the other other under the hoods as well. If you're new to coding, <laughs> you don't want to be here. <laughs> Go somewhere else. <laughs> if you're new to coding, we got lots of videos for um, for new things. The Zim Basics, for instance, and Code in Five Minutes are are, are fun to see. All right, but anyway, we're digging through some stuff here. We're coming down now to where we called, um, the other thing that connectors does is it connects to bases, like it connects to boxes. So it connects to the corners of boxes or the centers of boxes, and it connects with lines that have angles on them. Um, and I don't know if we're gonna be able to record those. I'm hoping that it will all work, but there's a lot of stuff in here that relates to those bases. And I'm not sure if recording is going to treat the bases the same way. It'll sort of be a, a gift if it works, um, but at least this will get us through the first phase of recording sort of more traditional without connecting to base uh, nodes or whatever. But anyway, coming on down here, so past all the stuff to do with bases, we're now to where we remove connectors. That was the other thing. We had to handle removing the connectors. So we do that in one of these. We've got a record here as well. So where was that? I'll just show you quickly since we're down here in the remove node, probably count. Yeah, okay. So um, if count minus one, I'm not sure why. Well, anyway, aside from that, else record a node. So we're recording when we move, we're recording when we remove, and we're recording when we... Isn't that funny? Remove means to take it away. It doesn't actually mean to, to move again. <laughs> we record when we move, we record when we remove, as in re, redo a move. No, but remove means to remove. <laughs> Removes means to remove. There you go. Nothing like defining something with the word. Um, Anyway, and we're recording, of course, when we make a node. So we have to handle all of those. And where we're handling those are down here in the record, which is right here. And by default, if you don't pass anything in, then it assumes that you're working with the, the latest node, the latest node, and it assumes that you're doing a normal connection. So we can get that with the latest node X and Y. Um, a down index. Uh, that's 
maybe what we started on or something. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, but if we pass in an I, an index, then we're maybe deleting some other index. And so this is the delete data that we want. Which index is it? It won't get any. So the array that we're dealing with here uh, basically looks like, do I have an example of it somewhere? Um, I don't see it. Make connection. The node X and Y, whether uh, whether it's a move. No, that's that's remaking the connections. I guess it looks like this, I suppose. Yeah, that's it, right? Okay, so an index, an X and Y if we're move or if we're creating. So this is the creating, an index, the X and Y. We brought that to Zim decimals to only you know make make it to two decimals or something like that. Uh, this is data. It's not that big a deal. Of course, data is so small compared to things like pictures and stuff, but you may as well keep it readable. If, if you didn't, you'd get like decimals, 15 decimals or something behind every X and Y, and there's no point for that. So that's us doing uh, the X and the Y of creating. Here is the delete. So it's a one there if we're deleting, and it's an X and Y if we're moving. And then it's whether or not we have the control key down because that, oh, it, it's not, it turns out it's not the key. It's not whether it's the key down, but it's whether the key was down when we <laughs> did the multiple select. So that was another thing. We, we, we started off sort of trying to capture whether the, um, the control key was down, but we were doing it too late. It already happened during the select process. So we had to sort of, I don't know, handle that with a flag or another variable. So basically uh, what, what that is, is the difference between, do I still have multiple select? Yeah, I do. Is watch, if I hold down the control key and, and double click, then only one of, no, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, only one of these, that's just the system that we have operational, only one of them moves. But if we hold, if we don't hold down the control key, and that's that's the child there. If we don't hold down the control key, oh, you can't see the difference. Hang on, let's just take that thing off. I don't know. Do you want to see the difference? Doesn't matter to you. <laughs> uh, it's all part of the story. That's kind of what this is like. It's a little bit of storytelling as to what's going on here. So let's make some nodes. There we go. If I hold down the control key. I can move them all. Oh. Did I, when it dropped it, did it automatically turn off? I guess it did. I thought it didn't. <laughs> I didn't think it was supposed to do that. I thought it stays selected. But anyway, uh, it moves them all. But if I just hold, if I hold down the control, or sorry, if I double click, it selects them all. Ah, there we go. If I hold down the control key and double click, it only selects the one. So we've got to handle both of those situations when it comes to um, recording the points. Did I hold down the control key or not? If I didn't, then I just move this one. If I did, then um, if I didn't hold down the con no, if I did hold down the control key, then it just sorry. Sometimes I get ahead of myself so much I can't even think about what I'm saying. If I did hold this is where, where well you guys are leaving <laughs> if you're even here here if you're here someday come in and say hi to us you know we'd love to hear from you but anyway if i do hold down the control key then what happens it moves only the single one so here's the control key it's moving only the single one if i don't hold down the control key and double click then that's the default behavior where it moves them all okay so uh, um, our bug was we thought we had to record all of those other ones being moved. Well, no, in fact, we only have to record the one being moved and then all its children will handle it naturally. And it was like, oh, okay, God. So that was like leaving the bug for a couple sleeps, you know, and coming back and then just having the realization, oh, that's why we're getting too much data and oh, we don't even need to do that. But then once we got that, we realized there was the case where all the children don't go. And so we have to, in the data, here's an example of the data right here where we realize that. Um, if we record the data, so this is us now in a timeout of five seconds, we're going to get the steps. By the way, the data is now automatically recorded. It doesn't take much to record that data. 
So by default, it's recorded for us. We don't have to turn it on. I thought about you know making a parameter that we would pass into the connector saying whether you want to record it or not. But it's so little data really, and it's you know no performance issue that we just record it automatically. But here uh, are us getting the steps. Okay, after timeout, we're gonna get the steps. The true there, much like the blob and squiggle, means pop up a little uh, window um, that will tell us it. So we go like this, we go back here and view it. And now watch what happens. I go like this, I go like this, and I go like this. And we wait five seconds, and there's the data that gets recorded. So I then select this stuff right here, copy. I go back into the connectors where here, <coughs> and we go steps. <laughs> this is where live demo. Here we go. We go steps, and that should recreate this as, as what we see here. And I refresh, and it did. Okay, yay! Brilliant. So, um, oh, but watch what happens. It pops up another window. So after five seconds, it popped up a window, and it is then showing you what was recorded <laughs> because it as it was remaking that it recorded these things again and that could be a process because say I, I came to here and now I say oh okay well now I want to put three more here like that so I would want to be able to record that I've added those uh, and hopefully these things are the same so if we put steps here steps those are exactly the same and that's great but what was happening is when we were doing some moving and some selecting and stuff like that, we had one where we said, ah, the control key was down. And what happened was when it remade it, it had a zero there. So when it when it popped up itself after, you know, said, here, here's what you just did, we passed in that as a one, but it was coming out as a zero. So what we realized is it works fine when we're here actually doing the multiple select like that. When we're actually doing the multiple select, it works fine. But if it's a recording of the multiple select, um, it plays it back fine. But the, the, the thing that we recorded or the thing that we recorded didn't have the other stuff selected. So the multiple select wasn't selected. And so that's when this thing came in right here, this control to record whether or not it was uh, recorded. And so basically what we're doing is we're saying, and that was tricky to figure out how to do. In the end, it wasn't that bad. So if we've already recorded that those were multiple selected, then we're going to get a one in there. Um, when we go to make the connection, uh, when we go to make the connection, let's see, where do we do that? That's from the data. A control is, is on. And what we're doing is we're faking the um, frame's control key. Because that's what the up, up above is doing. It, it looks, hey, uh, do you have that control key pressed down? So we're faking that. And that's how it gets made. But um, where, uh, let's see. So we're faking that, that up, up above it. That will help us in the re-recording. So now in the re-recording, here it is. The down mode, this is the move mode. Here's the up node. In the up node, we're passing the control in. So this is an override in a sense. We're passing the control in. So down If we go up into the move, those are all base. That's all the base stuff. Here's the move. I should probably be just using my little bookmarks here. Uh, there's the move. We receive it here. And basically where we're doing the record down here, rah, 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 right here, this is how it was before where we're just looking at the um, at the data. So this is whether things are selected in the selected list. And if it, the selected list is more than one, then that means we um, uh, didn't have our shift key down or our control key down, I guess our control key down. And so it was working the first time, but when we rebuilt, it, it didn't it didn't work properly unless we override it. So this is the override from the controls that then picked that. And what we did is we stuck. You see how we were collecting the node here, but here we're selecting the last thing made in the um, in the selected list. Uh, what we did is we collected the node here, <laughs> and it almost worked. We thought we already had it. Almost worked. It's just the wrong node seemed to be moving. And we we're going, what is going on? And we realized, oh, OK, right. We have to put that one in there, not this one in here. And so this is the story. You've probably had enough story. <laughs> this is giving you an indication 
of uh, what is under the hood. And in the end, I think we're pretty decent. I mean, I, I hesitate to delete something here and see if it worked because uh, most likely we're live. I think we get a live error, but we were doing that. We were uh, deleting, so I'm going to click on that and hold it. We deleted that. And we tried, you know, did the recording again. Sure enough, it looked like that. We we deleted this one. And sure enough, the recorded handled adding it and removing it. You know, that's that's what it needs to do. If, if we're building this, we have some end thing. We finally get to it. We may have been doing some deletes and some ads again. So we need that whole recording process to step through it all. And uh, it did. It went through a whole bunch of deletes and moves and all got recorded. And so I was like, yeah. Ooh. Well, you guys, this has been an under the hood. And it's been a pleasure to be here with you. I'm Dr. Abstract. So uh, you guys, ah, have a good time. Huh? Under the hood.